Hey there creepy peeps and welcome to another episode of Dissecting the Macabre. Thank you Zachary for the segment title suggestion. I don't, is this a segment? I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I was calling these horror movie dissections previously. Um, I thought maybe that had something to do with my leather, not my leather face, my Texas Chainsaw Massacre dissection getting slapped with a uh, demonetization so I changed it to horror movie must see I think the second one which didn't affect it. I'm gonna stick with dissecting the macabre for now. Thank you Zachary. Um, I really like the the title and I'm gonna roll with it. So today we're gonna be talking about Nosferatu which I have reviewed on here before. I'll link it up there. <laughs> <laughs> pops up over here. I'll link it up here um, if you want to go back and watch that. I think I did it for 31 Days of Horror last year. Um, directed by F.W. Murnau. It is a German horror film from 1922. <laughs> the very first adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula. I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with Nosferatu. I thought I would go ahead and cover it in this way because this is my favorite vampire movie of all. This is the top of the list of the vampire movies for me. I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, something that I didn't know <laughs> uh, previously, all the times I've watched this before, um, was the studio that made Nosferatu is called Prana, and Nosferatu is actually the first and only movie that this studio made um, as it went bankrupt uh, after Nosferatu, which I'll get into in a little bit. And only one camera was used for the entire shoot, so that means there was only one original negative for this movie, <laughs> which is amazing that it's survived all of that. I can't believe, like, th that already is, like, scary in and of itself, you know, not including what happens next in the story of this movie, but, um, but, uh, the screenwriter, shit, whose name I didn't write down, it'll pop up up here, um, the screenwriter, <laughs> took like wrote really detailed notes about like the lighting and the camera position and everything like that um for this movie which Murnau took very seriously and followed them to a T so much so that he often used a metronome to pace the acting because like the pacing and everything was so important for them for this movie he used a metronome uh, <laughs> which is Really, I've never heard of that before, but really interesting. I would love to see a scene acted out with a metronome. Isn't that crazy? So this movie did get quite a lot of praise when it first came out, but its uh, most common criticism was the bright lights that were used. Um, a lot of critics said that the vampire was too brightly lit and uh, that made him less scary and even though there weren't many horror films <laughs> before Nosferatu uh, at the time it wasn't the norm at the time uh, so a lot of people thought it wasn't scary enough of a horror movie. I have to touch on <laughs> the story that I think everybody knows about Nosferatu. Um, this was the very first adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula to film and it was completely <laughs> it was completely unwarranted um <laughs> we're now just they just decided to make the film um they didn't have any rights to the story so um stoker's at that time widow florence stoker um sued the sh out of them <laughs> um slapped them with a huge copyright infringement um and won uh so hence why the movie studio Prana went bankrupt and never made another movie again. Um, but luckily, uh, Florence was not able to destroy every single copy of Nosferatu and some have survived so we can watch it today, which I'm forever grateful <laughs> for those people that hit it or did whatever they had to do to make sure this movie survived. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nosferatu is not only cited as one of the first horror movies ever, but it's uh, one of two most commonly used examples of the German Expressionist movement, the other one being Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Um, 
but a lot of characteristics of German Expressionism influence the horror genre today, like the use of low-key lighting, um, the the way like sets are distorted and characters are distorted. <clears throat> um, Nosferatu is a little bit different in that it used on location shooting, which was not the norm for German Expressionist films. The norm 100% would be Dr. Caligari. If you haven't seen that film, definitely go check it out. That is like probably the best example of German Expressionism I can think of um, in terms of horror. Um, <laughs> and that was all closed sets, even like the outside sets were inside. Uh, <laughs> um, so Nosferatu used a whole lot of on-location shooting, which wasn't the norm. So there was, there was a lot of natural lighting, but the way they use the shadow is super important to the horror genre. Um, and they, there are a lot of really iconic shots in this movie that I love so much. <laughs> One of them is my desktop background, which is probably the most iconic shot of the movie, which is, um, Count Orlock's shadow climbing up the stairs to Ellen's room uh, to suck the blood out her neck. Another thing I learned when researching this that I didn't know before, because um, I didn't know about the metronome used for pacing in this, um, Carl Lamely Jr., who directed Dracula, um, also not only was he heavily influenced by Murnau's Nosferatu. He also occasionally used a metronome on set to pace the acting, which I thought was really cool and interesting and crazy again, because I'd never heard of that before. Um, so if you've seen Nosferatu, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. Um, you can head over to my blog again now if you want to read a deeper analysis of Nosferatu. It's not a review, it's more like, kind of like a film studies student, you know, analyzing Nosferatu. I know some of you older creepy peeps may remember <laughs> when I had a, a blog up previously and I just had a weird thing happen with my uh, domain name which is not important at all to explain um, <laughs> but it took the site down for a while and finally you know since I'm done with my regular classes and done working 50 hours a week at Panera, I had time to get it back up. So there'll be posts on there occasionally now. So <clears throat> and I'm gonna make sure they're like different. It's not just gonna be like extended reviews or anything. Like this is gonna be an analysis on my blog. So I'll link that down there for you. Um, so you can go check that out if you want. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, subscribe and become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday through Friday. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, stay strange. Bye.